Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about general management of metabolic alkalosis. Uh, before we begin, please review my earlier lectures on physiology of metabolic alkalosis and how to work through the differentials. In this, we'll take a quick review of the basic principles which will help you manage it more effectively. So the first tenet is in a normal person, aldosterone production is stimulated by hypovolemia and this causes volume expansion by sodium and water retention and hypokalemia and alkalosis are its side effects. And this occurs through activation of your renin angiotensin system. So to treat these patients, correct the hypovolemia and the best fluid for these conditions is 0.9% normal saline. You can also give aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone to these patients, which will block the aldosterone receptors. Alkalosis is maintained by hypokalemia. Low potassium causes intracellular acidosis and in proximal convoluted tubule, it results in formation of ammonia and this is coupled with generation of new bicarb. In DCT and collecting duct, it stimulates hydrogen and potassium exchanger, resulting in intracellular acidosis. Intracellular acidosis stimulates your hydrogen potassium ATPs and results in more hydrogen excretion. So hypokalemia and metabolic alkalosis results in loss of more acid and bicarb generation. Therefore, it worsens alkalosis. So make sure that you treat your hypokalemia aggressively. In DCT, there's a molecule called pendrin that helps secrete bicarb, but it needs chloride for it action. However, in volume depletion, hardly any chloride reaches DCT due to its reabsorption in proximal tubules, so pendrin doesn't work well. So in these patients, if you give them normal saline, you can send some chloride that way, and this will help excretion of bicarbonate, therefore helping correct alkalosis. Patients also have hypomagnesemia because of increased diuresis, especially in patients with mineralocorticoid excess and diuretic use, and this can perpetuate hypokalemia. Magnesium decreases the ability of potassium channel in DCT and CD to excrete potassium. Therefore, magnesium deficiency releases that magnesium-mediated inhibition of these channels, and therefore, it increases potassium secretions. So it is very important that you correct hypomagnesemia. So let's talk about diuretic induced metabolic alkalosis as it is most common. And the first question you have to ask yourself is if that level of metabolic alkalosis is harmful for a patient. If it is, stopping diuretic is better than giving them normal saline. Maintain their potassium as we know that hypokalemia makes alkalosis worse. Correct magnesium level since diuretic use also results in magnesium loss. You can add spironolactone to your loop diuretics, which will inhibit aldosterone and prevent hypokalemia. This will decrease the degree of alkalosis that you'll run into. Sometimes you can use estazolamide to cause metabolic acidosis. However, you understand that it can worsen hypokalemia as it causes type 1 and 2 RTA. Estazolamide is used in metabolic alkalosis because of premise that metabolic alkalosis decreases your minute ventilation. So if you treat with carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, it can correct this by causing metabolic acidosis and hopefully improve ventilation. However, in a randomized controlled trial in 2016, it did not show any improvement in duration of invasive mechanical ventilation. There was no difference in probability of being weaned off invasive ventilation. And in the subgroup analysis, they did not find any difference between astazolamide and placebo. However, the authors believed that the magnitude of the difference was still clinically important and thought that their study was underpowered. A more recent systemic review on estazolamide published in Thorax 2023 showed that there was no statistically significant difference in mortality or duration of ventilatory support. Just like in any other medical question, understand this medication better before you use it. The half-life of estazolamide is around 6-9 to nine hours and it is excreted primarily by kidneys. So this medication should not be used in patients with kidney disease. Since it worsens hypokalemia, try to avoid using it in hypokalemic patient. Estazolamide also decreases clearance of ammonia, can precipitate hepatic encephalopathy in cirrhotic patient. In COPD patient, it can result in hypercapnia. And since it has got sulfur moiety in it, try to avoid it in patients with sulfur allergy. In patients with Hyperaldosteronism, not from hypovolemia, try to figure out where this aldosterone is coming from and treat it. 
And to know that, understand the ACTH and renin angiotensin system cycle, which stimulate your aldosterone and glucocorticoids. Elevated ACTH can come from two sources, either pituitary adenoma as seen in Cousin syndrome or ectopic ACTH production, which is usually seen in bronchial carcinoid, neuroendocrine tumors, and sometimes pheochromocytoma. This would result in elevated aldosterone and cortisol levels. The next reason for increased aldosterone activity would be cortisol excess as seen in adrenal adenoma. You can also have primary hyperaldosteronism. In these cases, your ACTH will be suppressed and your renin will be suppressed as well. Hydrosteroids will suppress your adrenals. So your levels of cortisol, aldosterone and ACTH would be low. Patients with renal artery stenosis and renin secreting tumor will have elevated renin levels and elevated aldosterone. Licorice inhibits 11 hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase 2, so you'll have elevated cortisol levels. You can figure out the etiology by checking plasma renin activity, aldosterone levels, ACTH levels, and cortisol levels. And depending on your finding, you can pursue either a pituitary MRI or adrenal CT. So in these patients, finding underlying cause and treating it would help your metabolic alkalosis. These patients will not respond to normal saline and will get worse if you give it to them. Correct hypokalemia and correct hypomagnesemia. In Kohl syndrome, you can give hormone blockade with spironolactone or amyloride. In patients with volume depletion, these patients are chloride responsive. So normal saline is very helpful in these patients and giving them chloride will help increase bicarb excretion via penrin channel. It will also suppress aldosterone production. Make sure that you correct hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia if present. In patients with vomiting, inhibiting your proton pump would decrease loss of hydrogen and chloride, so decrease the amount of alkalosis that will develop in these patients. To summarize, finding the underlying etiology is very important in metabolic alkalosis. If the alkalosis has hypovolemic component, these patients will be chloride responsive and you can give them normal saline. Correct their hypokalemia and correct their hypomagnesemia. This is really important. You can use spironolactone with diuretics if indicated and you can use astazolamide but understand its use and its limitation. Thank you.